Senator, next we'll hear from Senator Sullivan. You're recognized for your questions, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate the witnesses. Testimony today on these important but sometimes complex uh, issues. So, Mr. Baker, I want to follow up a little bit on what Senator Cruz was talking about and how the system has worked, but we're starting to see things um, maybe fraying in some ways. Um, the FCC has had a spectrum auction authority since 1993 without lapsing. What would be the consequence, consequences if the uh, FCC authority does lapse for the first time in 30, 40 years in October and on the currently ongoing 2.5 gigahertz auction and more broadly, what would the sense of confidence in the industry be if the, there was a lapse? Well, thank you for the question. Um, as, you, as you say, FCC authority has never lapsed, so the uncertainty that that brings is, um, I think none of us have the right answers to those questions, and I think none of us want to find out the answers to those questions. It's really important that they have the authority to do their job. And um, while this 2.5 auction is a really important auction, and we have a lot of people bidding on that, that spectrum, and it's going to be very meaningful across the country, um, what's next is also important. Um, this is a ever-evolving dynamic uh, industry, and you know devices are increasing five times by 2027. We're going to need to continue to uh, roll out 5G faster, further, and and to do that, we're going to need more spectrum. So the FCC is going to have to have their authority. Let me ask um, for you, and then uh, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Bazelon. Uh, assuming we uh, we pass a short-term extension, what do you think this committee's priorities should be for a longer term bill. I think everybody agrees that we should have a longer term bill. Uh, I think we do need a short term extension so we don't go into this situation where there's lapsing authority. But prioritization on a few key issues, try to keep it somewhat short for the three I just mentioned on the longer term bill. Uh, ahead, absolutely, we need a spectrum pipeline bill to go along with the spectrum auction authority, and it needs to focus on mid-band. Most of the mid-band, two-thirds of mid-band is owned by government, so it's very helpful for Congress to specify those bands so that they actually get done. When Congress gives a deadline and specifies the bands, it gets done. So I, we think we just have to focus on the 3.1 to 3.45 that's in the Spectrum Innovation Act, and we hope to add four gigahertz and seven gigahertz to that pipeline bill. Mr. Lewis, thoughts on that? So a longer term authority even would send a great signal uh, from Congress to the agencies, and when I say agencies, I mean across the government, uh, that you have a real commitment to uh, doing the work, um, the trusted science work to determine uh, what the, the spectrum pipeline should look like um, and how it will work across uh, both government and private commercial and, and unlicensed use. Um, so uh, uh, it's really about certainty. Uh, Senator Wicker used the term bitter certainty earlier, uh, but bitter certainty is not the only certainty that's important. Uh, as, as important as the, the wireless industry is, uh, the providers, uh, certainty for innovators, uh, certainty for uh, government uh, and, and, and the uses of, of government and military. Um, uh, certainty for multiple sectors is what uh, I'm looking for when we suggest that we should have a longer term uh, authority committed uh, by the Congress. Dr. Bazelon, you have a view on this? The, yes, thank you. The um, spectrum pipeline does need to be filled. Uh, many of us can have ideas about what uh, those reallocations should be, but as a practical matter, it's only once the uh, FCC and TIA and the government agencies do the hard work to examine what it would actually take to reallocate a band of spectrum, will, is it ripe for Congress to then uh, direct the reallocation? So assuring that the agencies have the resources and the ability to make the, to do the planning they need will be key to uh, being ready to have that longer term um, directed authority. Okay, good, thank you. Let me uh, turn to Mr. Van Opp. Um, you know, a big issue that I think we need both in terms of spectrum, but also now in terms of allocating federal funds that are coming from the Infrastructure Act and other uh, areas is better FCC 
NTIA and beyond that federal agency coordination in this area. Um, uh, over the past year, the GAO has released a number of reports on federal spectrum coordination where you've made recommendations to NTIA and the FCC to improve their collaboration on uh, spectrum planning. Can you talk on that? And then I'm not, I'm not sure if you saw the five-page MOU that was signed Monday by uh, Mr. Davidson and Chair Rosenworcel. I think that's an important step. Um, can you comment on that as well, if you've seen it? Yep. And any other coordination issues beyond just spectrum policy, I think there's a whole host of areas where federal agencies, particularly those two agencies, need better coordination for more efficient use of our spectrum and telecoms industry for Americans, Alaskans. We're going to host a summit uh, next week with the FCC, NTIA, all up in Alaska, other federal agencies on this issue of coordination on the deployment of federal funds, at least as it relates to my state. Thank you for the question, Senator Sullivan. Um, absolutely. So as, as far as our recommendations, you know, we were really looking for the agencies to uh, shore up their collaboration processes. And so, you think the MOU helps on that? I do think so. I think it's a great first step. Think they it, read your report and then signed the MOU? They, they, I, <laughs> they certainly read our report. They there gave us a lot of comments good, on it. Good job. Man. That's good. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, one of the th recommendations we did make that's not really reflected in the MOU was related to NTIA and how it coordinates with federal agencies yeah. through the IROC process and, and, and otherwise. Uh, and one of the things that we thought was important was that for that NTIA uh, explain and, and document its procedures for how it represents executive agency views before the FCC to those agencies so that they could understand the types of studies that might, they might need to conduct so that they could understand whether there's, their views are being adequately rep represented or how they're being represented or whether, um, you know, what, what sort of trade-offs were made by uh, NTIA in pr producing a final uh, submission to the FCC. Because we have seen uh, agencies uh, submit their own comments to FCC yeah. proceedings, which is not disallowed right. uh, by any means, uh, but uh, sort of reflects the idea that those agencies aren't necessarily comfortable with, the where, with where NTIA was going with it. And so uh, being, having that ability for NTIA to resolve those conflicts with the federal agencies that it's meant to represent would be important too. Good. Well, thank you uh, for the work that you guys at GAO have done on this. And Mr. Chairman, I, I do think it's an important issue just beyond the spectrum issue. Um, and we can do that in terms of our oversight, but on further coordination between these federal agencies, particularly FCC and NTAA, on a whole host of issues, the broadband deployment uh, Funding is another one that I think is really important. Thank you.